when we talk about limits, really what we're talking about or what we're asking about is information about the behavior of the function around certain points or at different places. So keep that in mind throughout this discussion of limits. Initially, what we'll do is take a look at limits through a graphical approach, um, which just means literally given the graph of a function, can we describe the behavior around different key points or points of interest? So for instance, what we want to do is give some information about what's happening around these different x values. So I put around in quotes there because what we mean is we're interested in knowing what's happening at a specific x value, what's happening as we approach from each direction, and sort of combining all of that information together. So in part A, we want to know what's happening with our function around x equals negative 1. So at x equals negative 1, the first very obvious thing we can pick up on is that our function is defined, and that function value is 4. So the first thing that we can say about what's happening around x equals negative 1 is that at that point itself, we have a function value of 4. And now we also want to consider what's happening as we approach that point from both the left-hand side and right-hand side. So we want to think about essentially tracing along the graph from the left-hand side. As we do that, we see that we're getting closer and closer to this function value of 4. So as x approaches negative 1, f of x approaches 4. And we see that same thing is happening if we approach from the right. So at that point itself, at that value of x, we have a function value of 4. As that function approaches that x value from the left and approaches it from the right, we're getting to that same function value of 4. So that's a pretty straightforward case. Now we want to look at, in part b, what's happening around x equals negative 4. So we can start off by identifying the same information, that same initial piece of information is, which is what's the function value there. So we've got a break in our function, a filled in circle here, an open circle here, which means that x equals negative 4, our function value is going to be 3. So we can say that f of negative 4 equals 3. And now we again want to consider what's happening as we approach from both the left-hand side and right-hand side. So as we approach from the left-hand side, we're tracing along this graph from the left. And we see that we're approaching a function value of 3. So what we'll say is, as x approaches, and let's use that arrow as just kind of a shorthand notation, as x approaches negative 4 from the left, our function value is also approaching 3. So the same thing as our actual function value. But now as we approach from the right-hand side, so as we trace along our graph, and approach that value from the right, we see we're actually approaching a different function value. So as x approaches negative 4 from the right, we're approaching a function value of negative 2. So as x approaches negative 4 from the right, our function value is approaching negative 2. So it's possible in these cases, in A, as we approach from the right, from the left, and consider the point at that function itself, we have the same value. But here, since we've got a break in the graph, we see that as we approach from different directions, we end up with different values. Part C, we want to consider the same thing, what's happening at x equals 2. So in this case, we have our function defined, where we have that filled in circle. So f of 2 is going to be equal to negative 1. 
as we approach from the left, we're actually approaching that function value. So as x approaches 2 from the left, f of x is approaching negative 1. But again, here we'll get a different result as we approach from the right. As we approach from the right, tracing along that graph, we're actually approaching a different function value, in this case a function value of 5. As x approaches 2 from the right, f of x in this case is approaching 5. So again, if we have a break in our graph, like we did in cases b and c, then we're going to get different function values that we're approaching as x gets closer and closer to that value of x equals negative 2. And then in our last example, we want to look at what's happening around x equals 4. So we have an open circle in the graph at 4. So our function is going to be undefined at f of 4. But we still want to consider what's happening as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right. So in this case, as we approach from the left, we're getting closer and closer to this function value of 2. As we approach from the right, we're getting closer and closer to that function value of 2. So even though our function never actually takes on any value at 4, it's undefined there, we can say that as x approaches 4, in this case from both directions, our function value, f of x, is approaching a value of 2. So either from the left-hand side or the right-hand side. So we haven't introduced any real formal notation, except using these arrows to indicate that idea of approaching. All we've done is just looked at the graph to explain what's happening around these different points. So we have a case where the function value is defined. As we approach from both sides, we're approaching that same value. Two cases where the function is defined, but as we approach from one side or the other, we're approaching different values. And in this last case, a situation where as we approach from the left, and from the right, we're approaching the same value even though the function never actually hits that value since we have that open circle. So that's just a kind of general discussion of what's happening with that graph. What we'll want to do next is actually start formalizing some of this notation um, and give it a little more structure and meaning.